All right, we're talking to another native historian here that has been to other shops and she attempted to get a lot. Now, her situation is a bit different. She actually saw some things happening that made her very uncomfortable. And I don't blame her. I think it's nasty just as anything else. And I let her tell her part of the story, man. Go ahead, sure. So, um, I got to see her make the product. And basically what she does is she melts shea butter in a microwave. And it wasn't even like real raw shea butter. It's the shea butter from the store. It was yellow. It's not the shea butter. Really? And she melts it and adds honey and then some water body and um, some oils. And so she sprays your hair with like water body and then uses the shea mix. I'll tell you the thing that I want nobody to have hair. Did she, did she condition your hair? Um, the first time I went, because the first time I went, I didn't see her make the product. Uh -huh. She washed it, and she didn't do like a deep condition, like sit under the dryer or anything. She just, you know, did a regular what condition. What kind of condition did she use? Um, I want to say she used something with an M or something. What color? You know what color? Like a tan bottle. You know what that is, Sean? Mazzani. Uh, I was about to call her out. I said, that did not have an emotion. <laughs> 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 yeah, I think it was Masani. I want to say that's what she is. Okay. Sure. And then, um, <laughs> I went back to the week later, and I was like, my hair was already getting like real puffy and stuff, and I work in a corporate setting, so I wouldn't go work. And I thought she would have washed it because my hair was itching really, really bad, too. And she said it was too early for a wash, and just retwisted my hair again and then when I was under the dryers when I was able to see how she actually makes her products and stuff and yeah, I didn't want that in my hair. That is so nasty. And then you know what, if she'd continued this route, I'd have been so mad at her if she came to me and asked me, how do I get this white stuff out of my hair? <laughs> I was like, who cares? You should have put that other stuff in that beard and that, that, man, where, where can this philosophy come from? that you just gonna glue it up. You just gonna stick you some luck. You might as well get some of the, that brown, that little gray glue. And just take your hair and put it in there and just rub it up real quick. And wait for it to dry. You're doing the same thing, pretty much. That, those products, like, those products are like kind of makeshift. I do understand how one can go by and get them, but they're not beneficial. Then I, if you look at anybody that's older that's been locked for more than like eight years now at this point, um, their locks are like falling off, snapping off at the ends, just old decrepitude hair. And that doesn't make any sense. It really doesn't. Condition that hair, moisturize it, and stop picking it up finger coiling. Work with the comb. The comb is going to give you a better outcome. That's why she was puffy. It wasn't because of their product. It's because they just took some pieces of hair picked them up and smashed them in a circle. There's no congruency to this hair I'm looking at it. And it stuck, pretty much it. So what has to be done at this point is, she has to be on time, every time, to take care of it. It has to be twisted tightly, all the way down, so that as it's locking now, it'll grow congruent. Right now she has bugs in every last one of them that I can feel. And it looks like little ball bugs. It's not the actual budding that I'm, I'm normally used to seeing. And so that's another reason I know that it was finger coil. These ends are not together at all. And she still has a loose curl pattern, so that tells me another thing, it was a finger coil. And it was dry. So all of that sounds like snap, crack, or pop. Okay. No edges, no metal. Then they go out and they say, I need, a, I need something to make my hair go fast. Like real fast. What the hell you got? You need a baseball cap. Sean, mm -hmm. have you ever seen anybody use stuff like that before? Mm -hmm. Huh? Uh, you're just like, wait a minute. First of all, I'm asleep. Uh -huh. <laughs> I am asleep, okay? Absolutely. It happens all the time. And I tell people all the time, like, as stylists, mm -hmm. you shouldn't be buying products from Sally. You shouldn't get your products out of your refrigerator. <laughs> That's not the business. Like, all the time. He, I, everything I have, for the most part, is stuff that my clients can't go get. You know what I'm saying? 
the professional products. And I mean, there are some that are in stores, but not a lot. You know what I'm saying? Ms. Jen, what size did you, uh, did you want your locks to be? Oh, they're big. I'd rather smile if you can do it. Smile? Yeah. Okay. Sure. Yes, Mara. What What's the name of the uh, dance company you're with? Oh. <laughs> is, it, is it Debbie Allen? First, my business missionary Baptist club. <laughs> club, literally. Go ahead and do a pivot. No. Yeah. But, okay. The reason I'm showing sure Miss Jerry is Jerry has fine hair and she has grays. And, but the grays in her hair are not really resistant. A lot of people have grays that are resistant, like that one right there. There you go. That's one great observation. Sometimes these hairs will do what they want, when they want, how they want. They may have a less uh, coil, curl pattern than many others that you've seen. Um, as you see here, they do stick out in the hair, but as, as hair will do, it still forms as any other. I can take the comb and do that. I don't even have to put a necessary amount of heat to it to make it still do what I need it to do. Um, and I don't think that using putties and gels on these, and this is a very strong opinion, Putting putties and gels on, on this type of hair is going to work, not at all. This hair has been through a lot more in life than just younger hair, to put it in you know, nice words. Um, as the body ages, as the body grows, as the body does you know, certain things, or we begin to take certain medication or different things, it does affect our output of the body. So with things that we put into the hair at this point in life, we'll make the hair thin and break and fall off. Even in the younger person, the hair will still thin, break, and fall off. You have consequences on the other side of your consequences. You have lessons. So understand that throwing certain things in this type of hair without conditioning, without um, understanding the fiber and the texture, this hair will snap so quickly. So quickly. You may look at it like, oh, I'm just shedding. No, you're breaking things inside if you do not know what's going on. Ms. Jerry got a proper condition today, and all I'm doing is taking the coil, taking her hair, which is a tight curl pattern, in the back, it's even tighter in the middle here, and she has some looser ones with the gray, but still easily going in and just coiling, making this pattern come out. Now, for the naysayers, we me tell you something. I ain't make it up. It is what it is, and it's not, to me, it's not about a fight, but if you want to, battle the facts. Don't battle me. It's reality. I'm doing and bringing a balance to what's here. I can stick some crap in, just poke some crap in, and it's not going to work. I mean, hands down, you can see that. And for those that are not shampooing, you're leaving three or four months of just oils and goo and all of that. Your hair is not locked. It's just holding on to that. So the moment you take a comb or your finger through that, it's, it's through. But with this right here, I'm using her curl pattern. I'm using the formation of her hair and how it grows so that it can keep growing, keep growing healthily. You went from church to Hollywood. I need you to make up your mind. <laughs> stay, sweetie. Really? <laughs> I'm, I'm so pissed. <laughs> I am so well, pissed. Yeah. I need her to sit down. <laughs> you see, this is what happens when, you know, you command attention. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Command. Even the haters can't resist. They, they <laughs> talk about you. You better yeah. call me in. What's your name? Sequila? Baby. <laughs> she shot that forever 21. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. Um, well, since you, you, since you, you twirling and, and everything, why don't you give everyone a, uh, so a tour? What, of this oasis? Is that yes, what we're seeing? Exactly. <laughs> Go ahead and run it down for that real quick. Don't get the shampoo bowl. She's cleaning it. <laughs> <laughs> the shampoo bowl area. This is what this is looking like right now. We're still, you know, still working on it. We have the drinks in this area. No alcohol yet. Damien's on. Uh, he just got from his retreat. <laughs> <laughs> Good and sober. That's right. I took Rodney King's place. These are our dryers, custom built here. We got a little bench. We're gonna put, you know, little pillows on that for our clients. These are the stations. 
Damien should have had pictures of the hanging mirrors and the nice. They're yeah. called floating mirrors. Mm -hmm. They follow me, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Hollywood ballerina, you better stop. Then we have our reception area with this chair, and it's not pink, it's red. This is the one you don't sit on. It's called a decor chair. Damien broke one leg on it already. You know. Well, you should invite my kids. Or whatever. <laughs> And this is reception, and that's looking ghetto right now, so that's it. <laughs> I'm glad you did say something about wine. I need to get these stuff up. That's what she don't. <laughs> but pay attention to her part pattern that we've done so far. I go diagonally because it, to me it kind of makes it lay better for some strange reason from what I see in the spread of uh, It gives me that effect of fullness, you know, rocks are not just on top of each other going down straight lines, looking like all, you know, like somebody bricklayed her hair. I don't like that. It doesn't look natural. It doesn't look like you are just flowing this. I don't believe that hair should look so cultivated. If it just looks natural, it will give more a beauty aspect than just. Bam. I, I, I don't know. Maybe it's me. Maybe it's something about the balance and not paying attention just too much, but I don't like it. I'm not sure that. So, yeah, but. Another example of gray hair, and this gray hair is looser. And you see here that the curl pattern is not as tight as the one that you just previously saw, but still not a problem because just as the hair still has a loose curl pattern, things can still be done to it. In this level, I would ask other people, if she was younger, I would say, did you put a texturizer or something on your hair? But I know, and I can tell that this is her texture. This is her curl pattern because it's very congruent from the scalp all the way out. But I like her gray because she's going to have it in the front like a little faux hawk. I think that's going to be hot. Everybody's not going to be able to wear that. She got a little swag on. Got a little purple shorts on. I don't know what she thinks she's going to wear. It's none of my business. But anyway, um, I love her gray hair. I like her cut too. Her cut is going to have her locks very tapered. And it's going to come with a really nice dynamic. Um, so uh, after I finish this, I'll give you a sneak peek of what we're looking like. But I had to show you her gray too. Everybody is so mature these days. This is what I'm talking about. Time to grow up. I can 
pull it forward. So I'm not putting it on that way. I'm going to twist the right there and stick it that way. Can you see that? Take your head over that way. Just, it's with arm placement. Take it out. I want it to go this way. Basically, you, where you want it to go, you put your elbow in that part of it. And you just pull it to where you want to go. Make sure you hold that base. That's very beneficial. You don't want to just be snatching and yanking on that hand. And then you just lay it down where it needs to be. Tie that hand up. Put it under the dryer. Keep those edges down. It does not benefit to have this nice and clean if you go in the back. And you tap over the long front. So tie it down. That's it, I'm stuck. Lay it across the front. You don't really want to smash these back there. You just want to wave them up and crank them and everything. Alright, once you get them dry. Alright, we talked about parts and hair ratio. Today we've been talking about playing those sides. Before coming in and getting your lock started, you need to understand the size you want the size you need for yourself. I've had some clients that came to me and they've had a full forehead of hair. We're not going to give you any of these. And you're going to have the lion's mane. And you know, at times having too many locks can kind of make it uh, more of an issue too for your hair. So, like with this head of hair, it's very thick, it's very full. Uh, her shoulders are wide, so we can't do less of them out. I think so. We can't do like five or ten of them. We have to do at least, at least 150. She decided to tell me she wanted was medium small. So that's going to be a little bit, let me say my index finger will make at least four of her locks. That's a good size. It's a good standardized size so that she can actually do great styles. It'll look full. Cool. It'll look easy. It needs to go all the way from day one. Um, for those that want bigger sizes, of course, you do understand you have to have larger parts, which will cut out your level of quantity. But understand that no matter what process is, the way it started, the product and the tools and the process does not change. Just because you get bigger locks does not mean you need to put a little more gel in there or put a little grease or, you know, super glue or something. That, that's not going to work. It's, it's not. Um, but what we're doing is still, you know, my method all the way, comb through that hair first, make it really even all the way through, so that once it starts locking, it don't start looking like it got big Christmas ornament bugs in it. Comb through it with a good, durable comb. Small pieces, don't go through just rake it through no one thing. But it was, I thought it was very valuable for you to see this on the same, not just parts of hair ratio, but your sizes too. Stop differentiating right to the left sometimes. Make it all even. If you're going to go to the right, go to the right. If you're going to go to the left, go to the left. A lot of times, stylists can mess that up too. Um, I had some people come to me before, and I didn't know to the last minute that some of them went to the right, some of them went to the left. So if you are knowledgeable to that, and you know, you're just picking up pieces of that, and say, well, that curl to the left, it curls whatever way you flip that curl. So, when I got into that person's head, I totally messed it up because I went congruently all the way through going to the right. And this person that did some left and right, some up and down and all that. So at the end of it, I had to restart our whole head, then that it didn't look good. It did not look good whatsoever. Even this will make this a lot better and a lot easier. Um, and conditioning. We conditioned her very well before I just went in here. So I break it through my hair and see how easily this is flowing through. So know your size before you go stepping into some more. And don't just let them do stuff like you know, anything to you. I had someone tell me this morning she used a blow torch to see if of her in. Ouch. I don't I, I never heard of fire filling an in, especially in human hair, but see what you do. Don't try anything.